happens is there's a thing called the center of gravity. And the center of gravity on a car is the point at which if I were to throw this thing up in the air and actually twist it in a bunch of directions, this thing is spinning about the center of gravity. In other words, it's that, that, that imaginary center point at which all the, the forces of momentum and inertia act. That's what the center of gravity is. And what happens is, if this is the ground here, and the center of gravity on a sports car is about 17, 18 inches off the ground, okay? What happens is, the momentum tries to drive this forward, but you've got the force here on the contact patch going this way, and it wants to go around. That's weight transfer. You're transferring weight to the front of the car. But as long as the nuts and bolts are tight on the car, and there's no aero effects, you don't have monster wings and everything, what happens is the size of the contact patches as you negotiate the racetrack is a constant. In other words, watch, watch. Okay, the tire's filled with air just like this balloon, okay? And let's just say that's kind of, you can imagine that the air would be in there. If I have an ink pad, and I, let me get this out of the way for now. And I have an ink pad here, and I put this here. It's going to make an impression, a circle in this case, of so much area, square inches, okay? Well, it turns out the harder I push, the bigger the circle. And it just so happens is, with very little force, this is easy to pull. With more force, it's harder to pull. So the harder you push a tire into the ground, the better it grabs. And in this case, if you're applying retarding force here, the car's going in this direction, the center of gravity wants to keep on going. It's transferring the weight to the front. But guess what? It had to come from somewhere. You're transferring the weight from the front. Where did it come from? The rear wheels. So tell me about the contact patches on the rear. If the front contact patches are growing and growing and growing because the, the weight transfers to the front, what's happening to the rear, the size of those contact patches? They're getting smaller. And if they're getting smaller, the amount of cornering force we just saw is less. But you've got all the weight on the front end. <laughs> you've got a ton of weight up there, and if you go to turn the steering wheel a little, you've got a lot of load on that thing. It's going to go. So all of a sudden, you just turn the wheel. That front end's going to go like this. Well, the back end now wants to continue, but talk to me about the cornering force available at the rear if you've got your foot on the brake and it's all on the front. Not much. It's just going to want to keep on coming. Well, actually, you want to know something? That's called a rotation. When you have all the weight on the nose and you initiate the turn, the back end is light. The back end will want to come around. But let's see. If we turn the wheel this way and the back end came around here, that's the direction I want to go. That's how you corner a car at the limit. You rotate it, and rotation is a good thing as long as you can arrest the rotation. So if the removal of weight on the rear caused the back end to come around, what is the solution? Sorry? Accelerate the car. And the reason? The weight, you move the weight back. Yes. The Think about that. The weight removal caused that back end to come around. Well, guess what? We turned in this direction. Now the view's looking at the turn. That was cool. That's what we wanted. But if that back end keeps coming around, that's not good. We've got to add some load back there. And of course, when you step on the gas pedal, back end takes a squat. The front end comes up. Back end loads, gets some traction, and off we go. That's how you corner a car at the limit. It's all about weight management.